Hey guys, Nate here again with the next installment of Data Science Interview Tips. So just to recap, this is the video series where I'll give tips on data science interviews. We'll work through a real data science interview question where I'll apply that tip for you guys. So if you like this type of content, please subscribe to my channel where you'll be alerted whenever new videos come out and new tips come out. So this week's tip in your data science interviews is to always communicate trade-offs in your logic as you are coding up your solution. So as a data scientist, there are multiple, multiple ways to handle and manipulate data. And oftentimes there are no right or wrong answers, just solutions with limitations and considerations. So as a data scientist, your job is to be able to communicate those limitations and those trade-offs to your stakeholders so that the correct decision can be made using your, you know, using your insights. So understanding that there are pros and cons and trade-offs to every solution as you're designing it and to be able to communicate what those trade-offs actually mean to the solution and to the decision that needs to be made makes you a very successful data scientist. So your job as a data scientist is not only to be able to you know, design and code up solutions, but it's really to be able to guide your stakeholders to making the correct recommendation. So with the tip of communicating trade-offs, let's actually apply this tip to a real data science interview question. So this week's interview question comes from Facebook. So there's a link in the description where you can follow along with me. Uh, the link should take you to the Stratascratch platform as you see here with the question as well as the table schema and data that we'll be playing with as well as an editor to write in either SQL or Python. So if we read the question here, the question is, what is the overall friend acceptance rate by date? Order by the latest friend request date to the earliest date. And then you are given this table here with the user ID of the sender, the receiver, a date field, as well as an action column. So if we press preview, like I'm doing right here, we get this uh, preview of the table and the underlying data. So we have uh, an understanding of not only the columns, but then the data inside uh, the table as well to be able to answer this question. So. I think this is somewhat of a straightforward question in terms of what we need to do to it. So what might make this a more valuable exercise to you guys is if you pause right here, try to code up the solution to this question and then unpause when you're done. And then I'll take you through my approach to the question, to the, uh, to the solution, and let's just match our solutions at the end of this video. So when I take a look at the question again, what is the overall friend acceptance rate by date? And then I take a look at the underlying data. This is actually a pretty simple question in terms of the code that I'm going to use to uh, create the solution, right? So I know the metric that I'm going to be coding up is going to be a count of acceptances divided by a count of the number of cents, right? So that's definitely gonna be in the select clause. And then I'll work my way down um, to create two tables and then uh, a where clause where I'll add some logic. So the first test by the interviewer is actually a coding test. They just wanna see whether or not you can code in either SQL or Python or whatever language you choose uh, for the interview. This is kind of unique in that there's only one table, right? So in an interview, uh, especially when they're testing, trying to test your technical skills, you're typically going to have multiple tables to merge or join together. And in this case, we actually don't have that. So the first thing in my head is, is there going to be a self join uh, or a subquery needed? in this solution? And I think the answer is yes, because in this action column here, you have sent and accepted, right? And we already know from just this uh, line at the top, we wanna count the number of acceptances and the number of sents. So I can split this one table here into two tables based off of sent and, and accepted in the action column. So here's how I do that. All right, so if you're following along with me, 
here is how I am separating this table into two tables and joining it onto itself. So what I'm doing here in this first subquery that I've aliased with A is that I'm just I'm just basically splitting this table by action, right? So I'm I have action sent here and then I have action accepted in the left join in my second subquery here. Right, and so this is this makes sense because what I'm trying to do is split uh, the number of sends and then the number of accepted, because I want to get a count of the sends and acceptances. So I need to really split them up uh, between um, the, this table into two tables. And the reason why I'm using a left join here is because the number of sends should be greater than the number of acceptances, right? And if I do a left join, then I actually get to preserve that, that numbering or preserve that count. So the interviewer is definitely interested in your technical ability to understand and code up the fact that this table needs to be split in two uh, by sent and acceptance, uh, accepted and then rejoined together using a left join to preserve the row count. So if you run this uh, this code just to see if it works, it seems like it does. We get all of the columns we want. And then we see in this bottom right here, a few empty rows uh, from the left join. So that's exactly what we are expecting. So the next topic to consider is adding in this date component here to your solution because the question is asking for it, right? So what is the overall acceptance rate by date? I can do this in one of two ways. The first way is in this where clause, I can pick a specific date. Um, for example, you know, January 4th, 2020, uh, and just basically filter out all of the data based on that specific date. And so if I do that, I get the acceptance rate for, you know, a date that I choose like January 4th, 2020 versus putting a date uh, or a date field in this outer, the, the outer portion of the SQL solution so that you get an acceptance rate for every date in this table. So you can actually see kind of like the progression of acceptance rates by date, right? And so these are essentially two ways to solve for this problem. And what I would do is ask the interviewer what they want. And then the communication or the conversation about trade-offs begin. So if I put in a date field here in the where clause, what I get is the acceptance rate for one date, which could actually make the, the query run a little bit faster because you're kind of limiting you know, um, your, your solution set or the data that you need to, to basically come up with a solution. Or if you put the date up here in the outer part of the SQL uh, query, that is going to take a little bit longer or could take longer to to run the query because you are calculating acceptance rates for every single date and if you have you know billions and billions of rows this could take a while but you have the advantage of seeing the acceptance rate and how it actually progresses and changes by date for probably every single day right um, what you could do to scale this up and, you know, make this into kind of like a production run is to make this a job that or a SQL query that runs overnight or every night so that you get the acceptance rate um, for every single day, every day. Right. And so this is the discussion of trade offs that you should be having with the interviewer because you are showing the interviewer that you understand the limitations and the pros and cons of every solution uh, that you are that you are coming up with, right? Because there are multiple ways to come up with solutions to this given question or given um, problem. So the data topic that I want to bring up is what data to actually count. And I see essentially two trade-offs here. If I count friend requests that has been sent either today or yesterday or the day before, that really hasn't had much time to mature. Uh, the other friend that gets the friend request may not have had enough time to actually see that notification or that email and actually accept that friend request, right? So if we count very, very recent data, 
then uh, the acceptance rate might be lower than actual, right? Versus the opposite, what if it's a friend request that hasn't been accepted from over a year ago? Do we actually wanna count that in? Um, that depends on the use case. Am I running an experiment? Am I trying to test out a feature? If, if the answer is yes to either of them, you may not want to keep old, um, you know, old data points. So depending on the, on the use case and what you're trying to do and the decision that you're trying to make, it really will affect and impact how you write the code and decide on what data you want to keep and throw away. So let's say I talked to the interviewer and we decided to only keep data records that are um, older than 12 days from today. How would I implement that? The way I implemented that was essentially just to put uh, some logic in the where clause where I'm taking today's date and I'm going back 12 dates and I'm only then keeping data records that are older than 12 days from today. And so this is you know, essentially one way to do that. But what's important here is not that I was able to code this up because to the interviewer, I already know how to code. I coded everything uh, that you're seeing right here. So adding just this logic statement, is it's not a big deal, right? But what's really important in the interviewer or in the interview is to actually have a discussion about this. Like, why did we pick 12 days? Um, are we, is that like the average uh, time it takes for somebody to actually accept an, um, a friend request? Um, or is there some other reason? But just, so with that conversation, I would say that this solution is done. This is essentially the solution here. Um, and then the conversation about trade-offs, uh, like how we want to actually count these, uh, these users, uh, whether or not we want to put the date field here in the select clause or in the subqueries, and then whether or not to uh, throw away or keep recent data. All of that is a conversation about trade-offs and a conversation about how your decision will impact uh, the number and the solution that you're going to get at the end and how that might impact decision making. So the purpose in communicating trade-offs, again, is to show the interviewer that you have a deep understanding of what the solution actually means. So if you write it one way, you're going to get a different solution, a different answer. If you write it another way, you're going to get another um, solution, another answer. So the ability to guide your stakeholder to making these decisions and then communicating the limitation and considerations of uh, your code and what it means to the actual number that comes out and what it means to the output, that's the most important part as a data scientist. So just to recap, in your data science interviews, you do want to communicate any limitations and trade-offs to your solution as you're coding it up. So this allows you to understand if your interviewer wants you to code up your solution in any different way. It also allows you to flex your skills on one, understanding and showing the interviewer how you can manipulate data in different ways. Two, your communication skills on communicating limitations and trade-offs to your solution and what that means to insights and recommendations that need to be made after uh, you come up with a solution. So both great skills to have as a data scientist. And that's it for this week's tip. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, I'll see you next week for the next tip. Thanks.